My name is Luna Zanotti and today I am recording my first YouTube video ever. I had this idea last night actually at literally like 2 in the morning. I just had this thought. I was like, I am going to make a video about how to be a boss ass. Not, re <laughs> not really. Um, this video, as you can see from the title, is about what basically I have learned in my first year of being my own boss. I'm a realtor, so I do have a boss technically. Um, I have a brokerage that I'm associated with, but on a day-to-day -day basis, there's nobody telling me what to do. There's nobody um, making sure I'm doing my stuff. There's nobody keeping me accountable except for myself. So the purpose of this video is really just to give y'all some tips um, that might help you in your first year or even if you're not in your first year or you're just thinking of starting your own business, I just want to tell you what I've learned and hopefully you can take that and run with it. It's a really scary thing to do. So these are my seven tips to help you slay the girl boss scene. Okay, so tip number one, this is probably the most obvious one, is chase your passion. Make your job something that literally keeps you up at night. Like I said, I'm a realtor. I literally stay up at night thinking about what do I need to do tomorrow? What do I want to do tomorrow? What do I want to accomplish to help my clients best? If your passion is makeup or you want to start a YouTube channel or you um, want to be a gymnast, do something that you freaking love because those are the people that succeed. The people that chase their passion till like, till the death, basically. Don't let people tell you what to do. Don't let people tell you that you're being stupid for chasing your dreams. Don't let people, I'm sorry. Don't let anybody or anything come in between you and what you want to do for the rest of your life. Um, one of my favorite quotes is by Mark Cuban and the quote is work like there is somebody working 24 hours a day to take it away from you and I love that because it's so true if you don't start today if you say oh well when this happens or when this happens you're never gonna start you're, you're never gonna do it you're gonna procrastinate for years and years and you'll look back when you finally do start if you do and be like damn I wish I would have started like when I first had the idea there is somebody else on this earth that will work harder than you, that will chase after what you want harder than you, that will do whatever it takes to make you not succeed. Okay, tip number two is it's okay to mess up and cry. It's totally, totally, totally fine. I cry all the time. This first year, I have cried more than I cried all of college put together. No doubt about it. It is frustrating. It is hard. It is tiring to be by yourself running your own business. Of course, there's a lot of things that I don't have to do um, because I am a part of a brokerage, but there's a ton of stuff that I had to teach myself. A good example of this is, y'all remember when Kylie Cosmetics launched those lip gloss brushes that were like janky as hell? Anyways, I'll put a picture here. She's a millionaire and no no offense to her. I, I Honestly, I like her lipstick, but it was her first year running her own business. You make mistakes. It is okay to make mistakes. Two weeks later, she was still selling out her stuff in 0 0.2401 seconds. So you can bounce back. If she bounced back from something like that, you can too, mama. You can too. No two businesses are alike. No two people can do the exact same thing and um, be successful in the same way. If you want to copy somebody else's business plan, you're not going to have the same exact results as them. It's just not possible. You need to find what works for you, and the best way to do that, honestly, is by trial, trial and error. You will try and fail and try and fail and try and fail, and then you'll try and succeed, and then you'll know what to do. You'll okay, moving along to tip number three, which is find friends that will help you. I don't mean find friends that will help you run your business. I mean more as find friends that are in your realm of work doesn't necessarily need to be the exact same job as you. For example, I have a close friend named Tori. She is a realtor in Michigan. We live like 1,200 miles apart, but we literally text all the time. We FaceTime all the time. We help each other out. We motivate each other because neither of us have that colleague support system, which is one of the biggest things about being your own boss is that 
you don't get some of the things that people that work in offices do. You don't get to have friends at work. You don't get to have eight hour a day access to other people helping you. So find somebody or a couple people that will help you motivate yourself, tell you, like, if I pull up me and Tori's text right now, it's gonna be like, you go boo, you sell that house. <laughs> All day, every day, we're just helping each other, motivating each other, venting to each other. It's really good to have somebody that you can do that with. Find somebody that doesn't want you to fail. Which leads into my next tip, tip number four. So tip number four is you need to have the right mindset. You have to have the mindset of, I'm not gonna take no for an answer and I'm not gonna fail. There's no possible way on this planet that I will fail at what I'm doing because I love it so freaking much. Why it connects back to people that don't want you to fail is, okay, if you take anything from this video, anything, take this from me, hold it next to your heart. <laughs> if you want to run your own business, remember this, people want you to fail. They do. Everybody, almost everybody, except for, you know, maybe your mom and a couple people in your life, want you to fail. They, they don't want you to do better than them. Why would they want you to do better than them? They don't want to see you succeed more than they did because what does that do to them? That makes them feel insecure? Exactly. That nobody wants to feel insecure. Nobody wants to feel inadequate. So remember this. Every time somebody says, oh, you're doing that? That's dumb. Oh, you, you went to college to be a realtor? <laughs> you want to go vegan? You can't do that. It's not going to last long. You're going to try and fail, blah, blah, blah. Don't listen to them. Just nod and be like, okay. Brush it over your head. Do not take what people say into account. If you have a passion and you want to chase it, do it. Just don't let other people tell you what to do and how to live your life. Because the reason they are telling you not to do it is because they don't want to see you be better than them. Point blank. At the end of the day, when you're like successful and shit and they are not, who are they gonna be asking for help? Okay, so tip number five is actually um, an organizational tip. So, whatever you do and however you do it, really, um, whatever you do and however you're gonna run your business, you need some kind of organization. Get a planner, write down everything. Write down your to-do list, write down your notes, write down your appointments, write everything down because when you're when you have your own business, you're not gonna remember every single thing you have to do unless you write it down. So just take my word for it. At first I didn't write stuff down. I got screwed over. <laughs> so just write stuff down. Second thing is I have this notebook. Um, basically it's just full of blank paper. Diddle, can you stop? Please. You wanna write all your notes down in one place so that you can go back and refer to them. It's just really good to have somewhere to put all of your notes collectively, save it, instead of writing it on a piece of paper and then that piece of paper sitting on your desk and then eventually getting thrown away. So the last thing, which is my favorite tip organizational wise, so you know how when you work in an office, I had an office job for six months, they gave you all this like cute stuff like uh, notebooks with their logo on it and all of that. And so when you're your own boss or you work for a company that doesn't directly manage you, you don't get that stuff. So make your own. <laughs> March your little butt into the office max. Go on their little computer, print it out right there when you're buying all your supplies. I guess you could do it at home too, but I did it at office max. Do it yourself. I mean, honestly, I think it's cuter than what someone would have given me anyways. So in here I have a ton of business cards from companies and I have these sheets so whenever um, I meet new people I put their business card in here so I own it forever. So the training materials that I do have, I put them in here in laminated sheets um, and I took notes on them. And then the rest are just little folders with uh, a bunch of different contracts and stuff that I need to give to clients. Obviously this doesn't apply to just real estate. You can do this with anything. This could say, Luna Zanotti, event planner. Luna Zanotti, cake designer. Luna Zanotti, wedding dress aficionado. Luna Zanotti, ice skating champion. Luna Zanotti, ice skating teacher. Luna Zanotti, YouTuber. Y'all get the point. It can be anything. Just have something that has your name on it, has everything, all your resources that you need, and you can add to it and change it out. 
Okay, so tip six is use social media to your advantage. Oh my gosh. I get more leads and inquiries off of social media than anything else. If you are marketing to the right people using the Facebook ads in the right way, you will get noticed. I promise you just need to do a little research on how to do it. What are the best ways? Google is your best friend for everything. I cannot even tell you how many things a day that I Google because I have so many questions about so many different things. Just do the research. Learn what you have to learn to not have to do the research again. So through social media, trial and error. Again, do things that you think are going to work. If they don't work, try something else. Research what other people have done that may be in a similar industry that have worked for them. There's so many forums out there about Facebook ads and everything like that. Use that information to your benefit. Make a page or an account for your business and don't muddle it with your personal page. Use that page to market yourself separately. So the last and seventh tip that I have is probably the second most important thing. Um, I learned this the hard way. I know a lot of people have, and that is do not, I repeat, do not celebrate anything until it is sealed deal in the books, in stone, written in paper, signed, sealed, delivered, everything like that. You get what I'm saying. Don't go out and be like, oh, well, I had a client that wants to buy a $600,000 house because you tell a bunch of people that, what are they going to ask you in a week? So how's that client? Do they buy that house? And you're like, no, no, she backed out. You know what? You never want to say that. You don't want to sell yourself before you're, you know, do y'all get what I'm saying? After it all happened, surprise people and be like, I had the honor of doing this person's makeup. I had the honor of planning this person's event. You don't want to tell anybody anything because I have done it before and I've had to retract what I said and it's embarrassing. It's not fun. Don't let yourself get excited until you really, really, really know that it is a solid deal because the more you let yourself down, the more frustrated you'll be and the more willing to give up or put less effort in. Chase those clients and those dreams that you have until they are yours, until they are tangibly in your hands, done, not tan. I look like I'm choking somebody. You don't want to tangibly choke anybody or put them in your hand. Don't let anybody know anything. And that way I also feel like it doesn't like curse it because you can totally curse yourself if you talk about it too early. So those are my tips on how to be your own girl boss. Obviously these tips apply to boys too, but I'm just doing that for the sake of the video because I am a female. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something. You can take those tips and kind of use them in your own business. I hope that they were helpful. I feel that those are the biggest things that I learned in my first year. And if I would have kind of known that before, maybe that would have prevented a couple of tough times throughout my first year. Definitely let me know if this video helped you. Let me know if you have any other tips. I would love to hear your tips, what you learned in your first year, or what you've learned in your first five years, what um, something that has really helped you. I'm always wanting to grow. I'm always wanting to learn more. So please let me know if you do have any tips. And if not, thank you for watching this video and I'll see y'all later. Bye.